hey GED students, this looks pretty intimidating, okay? But first thing I wanna point out is, do you see how there are no exponents on the variables? It's, I don't see like a square or something like that. So this is not a quadratic equation. This is just a nice linear equation. Even though it looks kind of gross, we can use our lovely three wisdom principles for solving linear equations. And most of the equations on the GED are linear equations or linear inequalities, which use the same basic three wisdom principles. So these three principles are really going to serve you well. Okay, so first principle then, and again, this is not the only way to do things. That's why I'm calling it a wisdom principle. It's just the way that I see that when students take this approach, they make the least mistakes, okay? So the first step that I'd like to do is simplify both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. Remember what an equation is, it's, it's two equivalent expressions. We have an expression on the left and an expression on the right. We've always been able to simplify expressions, so if there's any simplifying you can do, you should do it right from the start. It'll make your life easier. So let's take a look. On this left-hand side, the only simplifying, the only work they, I see indicated by the signs here is adding, and I cannot add these two numbers, negative 16 and 5n are not like terms. You know, one's a plain old number, one's an n term. So they can't add, so no simplifying to do on the left. But looking at the right, I see some simplifying I can do. First thing that I'm noticing here is that this negative seven is shoved up against this parentheses, and that is multiplication. And so I am going to use that lovely distributive property that says that you can multiply a number by a grouping by just passing out that multiplication. And I want you to know this is the second time I've done this video because the first time I did a really silly error. It was a sign error. So easy to do on these multi-step equations. So negative six, or negative seven I should say, times negative six is positive 42. Not negative 42 like the first time that I did this. Um, and so if you struggle with signs, use your calculator for this. Um, I probably should have. <laughs> That's what I get for doing math before I've had all my coffee. But now negative seven times positive eight n. When you're multiplying, you read this as a positive, not a plus. So negative seven times positive eight n gives me negative 56 n. And I have that plus three. Remember that multiplication stops at the end of those that parentheses so that three didn't get affected. Now we said there was no simplification to do on the left-hand side, so it's just gonna look exactly the same. And there's my new equivalent equation. Now, don't stop simplifying until you don't see any anything else you can do on either side. So I still see one more thing I can do. I can combine like terms on the right-hand side. This is a plain old number, 42, and this is a plain old number, plus 3. And so I can definitely combine them. So 42 plus 3 is 45. I used up this, I used up this, but I didn't touch the negative 56n, so let's drop that. Okay. And then on the left-hand side, of course, we said there was no simplification we could do. Negative 16 plus 5n. Okay. Now, what should my next goal be? I've got no more simplifying I can do. I can't do the addition on the left-hand side. Those are not like terms. I can't do the subtraction on the right-hand side. Those are not like terms. So now it's time to start that kind of moving from one side of the equal sign to the other. Now, your first priority when you do that should be to get the variable terms together. Now this doesn't always happen. This is, you know, again, these are wisdom principles. But what you're gonna notice in this particular example is that I have variables, those are letters, on both sides of the equal sign. Look at that, there's n's over here and there's n's over here. You know, how am I supposed to isolate the variable, get the letter alone? If the letter's everywhere, there'll, there'll be nowhere for the numbers to go. So our first goal has got to be to get those variable terms together. Okay, now you might be saying, well, which one should I move? It actually doesn't matter. But because I love getting rid of negatives, because negatives mess with students, I'm gonna concentrate on this one. This one is currently subtracting, minus 56n. If I want to move to the other side of an equal sign, I have got to use opposites. So I'm going to add 56n. Notice I'm taking the whole term, number and letter. That's exactly what you want to do. Now you can do whatever you want. This whole opposite um, thing is allowed as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. You've got to keep your balance. So I'm going to jump over there to the left-hand side, do the same thing. And now let's see what my new equivalent equation will be. 
Well, on the right hand side, something really cool happened. That's what I wanted. That subtracting 56n and adding 56n are opposites. They canceled, so all I have left is 45. And then on the left hand side, I didn't touch my negative 16, but here, positive 5n plus 56n is going to give me 61n. Okay, so now I simplified my left and right hand side. I got my variable terms together on to the final step, and this is really the point of what we're doing. This is really what we need to do here. This is isolating the variable. Isolate the variable. Now, what does isolate mean? It means get it alone. And what's the variable? It's the letter. So guys, all I'm saying here is get the letter alone. You want the letter by itself on one side of the equal sign. So your job is going to be to move away these numbers that are hanging out with that N, okay? Now, order does matter. So remember that when we're doing this isolating process, when we're moving from one side of this equal sign to the other, we're actually working backwards. And so we're going to work the order of operations backwards. Move anything that's adding or subtracting first. And I mean adding or subtracting with N. So if you look at where N is right now, 61 is shoved up against N. It's a multiplier. But negative 16 here is separated with this plus sign. It's a term. It's something adding or subtracting. Let's move it first. So if I want to move negative 16, I am actually going to have to add 16 because going down 16 and going up 16 are opposites. Okay. I could do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And now let's see what my new equivalent equation will be. Well, subtracting 16 and adding 16 are opposites. They zero out. So all I have left is plus 61n, which is, of course, just positive 61n or 61n. And that's going to be equivalent to the other side, 45 plus 16. And I have a feeling that's going to give me 61 as well. Yay! All this ugliness for a pretty answer. Now I'm almost done, n is almost alone, but I have this multiplier of 61 hanging out. So I use the opposites to move things from one side of the equal sign to the other, so I'll divide by 61. I can do whatever I want, as long as I do it to both sides. And let's see what our new equivalent equation will be. Multiplying and dividing by 61 are opposites, they cancel. n's alone, just like I wanted, and that's easy math. 61 over 61, you know, it's the same number top and bottom, it simplifies to just one all that work to find the answer one. All right, once again, I don't see any exponents on this and this is just a linear equation. I'm gonna use my three wisdom principles. First thing, treat it like it's two separate problems, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and simplify if possible. Taking a look at this left-hand side, I definitely see some multiplication I can do. Remember when we're simplifying, we multiply before we add and subtract. That positive 3 is shoved up against those parentheses. It is multiplying. Let's do that first. Again, as you multiply, you treat plus signs like positive and minus signs like negative. Okay, so positive 3 times 8 is going to be positive or plus 24. And positive 3 times positive 8n is going to be positive 24n. Okay. Now I haven't done anything to that negative 10n. It'll just drop here for me to deal with possibly on the next step. And then again, I can see multiplication on the right hand side. See that negative 6 shoved up against the parentheses? Let's deal with that. So negative 6 times n is negative 6n. And then here perhaps is the most common error students make. Don't make a sign error here. This is negative 6 times negative 4. And again, you can do it in your calculator if you want to. But negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24. And so I'm going to get this plus term, plus 24. Beautiful. Okay, now make sure there's no more simplifying you can do. And there is. Take a look at that left-hand side like terms. That's an n term. That's an n term. We can combine them. Let's go ahead and do that. So negative 10n plus 24n. Again, you could type negative 10 plus 24 into your calculator, but I would get 14n. I use that. I use that, but I haven't used up the plus 24, so it'll still be there on the line. And then on the right hand side, I can't do this addition. These are not like terms. This is an n term and this is a constant term, so can't combine them. They'll just stay. Okay, wonderful. I've simplified both sides. Now it would be very wise for me to get the letters, the variable terms, to the same side. All right. Now, again, I like getting rid of negatives if I can. So that negative 6n is right where my eyes go to. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add 6n. Now I can do whatever I want as long as I 
do it to the other side. Notice how I jump from just putting the end term right under the other end term because I know what it's going to be able to combine with. Okay, 14n plus 6n is 20n. I haven't done anything to touch my 24. And on this side, negative 6n and positive 6n and cancel. And I have plus 24 or just positive 24. Cool, looking good. Now it is time to isolate my variable, get the letter alone. Now we're working the order of operations backwards now because we're solving. So when you simplify, you go forwards. When you solve, you go backwards. So I'm going to do the uh, um, addition term, the ad adding and subtracting. I'm going to move those numbers first. All right. So the opposite of adding 24 is subtracting 24. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Let's see what my new equivalent equation will be. Yeah, I know I repeat the same language a lot. It's because when I get you get to the test and you start freezing up, I want my voice in your head. I want you to hear, well, let's see what our new equivalent equation will be. <laughs> All right. So adding 24 and subtracting 24 cancel. I got 20 in left on this left hand side. Oh, and look at that. If I have 24 and I take away 24, well, psh, there's none left. That's zero left on the right hand side. But I want n to be alone, so I better divide away this 20. And I can very quickly now see that this is going to cancel, so n's alone, and 0 divided by 20, of course, is just 0. And once again, my solution here is 0. All right. Whew. No wonder vice versa was intimidated. These are challenging. So if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I will do my best to answer it. Happy learning.